In this video, we will talk about IB Math Pass Paper, AI, Higher Level, Paper 1, Time Zone 1, May 2021. Question 1. The mean number of fish is 1.1 per hour, and the number is modeled by a Poisson distribution. Now, spans 8 hours fishing, and we need to find the probability of the number more than 9. So, we let x to be the total number of fish. And it will also follow a Poisson distribution with the mean 1.1 times 8, 8.8. .8. Now, we would like to find px greater than 9. By calculator, we get 0 0.386. Question 2. A Fernoy diagram is shown. T1, T2, T3 are 3 towers and T4, the 4th tower, is located somewhere in the shaded region. Dash the nice represents the edge. Now, team stands inside the shaded region, and for part A, we need to explain why team will receive the strongest signal from T4. Very easy, since inside the shaded region, all the pawns are closest to T4, instead of the other towers. Part B now we know T2's coordinates, which are negative 9 and 5. And the edge AB is Y equals 3. We need to find T4. For the distance from any points on edge AB to T2, should be the same as that to T4. As the edge line Y equals 3 is a horizontal line, the line connecting T2 and T4 should be a vertical line. So, the x coordinate of T2 and T4 should be the same, negative 9. The distance between the T2 and the edge is 5 minus 3, which is 2. So, the y coordinate of T4 is 3 minus 2, which is 1. Part C. We have the coordinates of T1 and we want to find the slope of the edge between T1 and T2. Similar concept to part B. The edge should be perpendicular to the line connecting T1 and T2. So, we try to find the slope of this line first. 5 minus 3 over negative 9 minus negative 13, which is half. As the edge is perpendicular to this line, its slope should be negative reciprocal to half, which is negative 2. Question 3. There are two people. In the first day, they both won 500 meters. On each subsequent day, C wants 100 meters more than the previous day. So, it forms an arithmetic sequence. And for D, she wants 2% of the distance more than the previous day. So, it forms a geometric sequence. Part A. We need to find the total distance C and D went on day 20. For C, by the formula of AS, we have UN equals U1 plus N minus 1 times the difference. By substitution, we have 500 plus 19 times 100, which is 2400. And for D, by the formula of GS, we have UN equals U1 times bracket 1 plus 2 percent to the power 19, which is 2, which is 728 Part B On day N D wants more than C for the first time and we need to find N As D wants more than C we set the general formula of D is greater than C and then we just need to graph two expressions in the calculator or just by the function of the calculator we can get n is greater than 184 something. So, n is equal to 185. Question 4. A professor has a function r, represents the percentage of the information retained by his student after his lecture. t is the number of days after the lecture. Also, he finds that after one day, only 50% of information retained by his students. Part A. We need to find P. We just substitute 1 for T and 50 for R into the function. 
By calculator, we can get 0 0.693. Part B. We need to find the information retained after 36 hours. 36 is 1.5 days. So, we just put 1.5 into T and calculate R and we get 35.36. Part C. The professor believes that there must be some information left whenever. And we need to explain that. It is because RT is an exponential function. And we need to remember that all the exponential functions are always positive. Part D. We need to write down the limitation of the domain of the model. So, we need to think what value of t is not reasonable. t represents the days after the lecture, which cannot be infinite or very very large, as we cannot live forever. Question 5. A vector question. We have a triangle with three points A, B and C. Part A. We need to find the vector CA. So, just use the number of A's coordinates minus that of B. It is negative 3, negative 4, and negative 1. Then, we need to find the vector CB. So, we just do the similar thing and get 3, negative 4, and negative 1. Part B. We need to find the cross product of the upper vectors. So, we either use the way for finding cross product, or set a program in our calculator and use it here. Anyway, we will get 0i, negative 6j, and 24k. Part C. We need to find the area of ABC. Area is equal to half the norm of the cross product of CA and CB. As we have find the cross product in part B, so we can calculate its norm. Square root of the sum of the square of the number above. Finally, we get root 153. Question 6. We have a triangle with signs 56 and 82. Each measured correct to the nearest meter. We also have an angle 105, which is corrected to the nearest 5 degrees. Everything is marked in the diagram below, and we need to find the maximum possible area of the triangle. By the formula of area of triangle, it is equal to half AB sine theta. And then, we need to consider the maximum possible signs of the triangle. As they are correct to nearest meter, their upper bound are the values measured adding half of a meter, which are 56.5 and 82.5. And then, we need to consider the maximum of sine theta. As the angle is corrected to 5 degrees, its possible value is between 102.5 and 107.5. And be careful, this is a tricky part, as the highest degree doesn't make sine theta to be greatest. Actually, for sine theta, its value is decreasing after 90 degrees. A smaller theta actually makes sine theta greater. So, we need to take 102.5 instead of 107.5. And finally, we just need to substitute all the values back to the equation and input them into the calculator. Then, we can get the answer 2275. Question 7. A gift box is a wide angled triangle GIK. A rectangle HIJK is inside the triangle. Some of the lengths are labeled in the diagram. Part A. We need to find the area of the triangle. Triangle area is base times height divided by 2. Height and base should be perpendicular to each other. GI is the height and IK is the base. The area is GI P plus 6 times IK 8 plus Q and then divided by 2. Then we need to write A only in terms of Q. So we need to find another equation that connecting Q and P together. 
such that we can replace P by the expression in terms of Q. When we see a rectangle inscribed inside a triangle, we need to know that the lines here are parallel lines, and the angles here are the same. Thus, these two triangles are similar. This check often exists in the geometry questions. Similar triangles are always used in this kind of questions. So, by the same ratio, we have P over 8 equals 6 over Q. Then, we can make P to be the subject and put it back to the previous expression of A. Finally, after simplification, we get the answer. Part B. Find dA over dQ. So, we just need to differentiate the area by power rule. Put the index in front and subtract the index by 1. As 40A is a constant, it disappears. Part C. We want to minimize the area, so we set the derivative to be 0. We have negative 192 over q squared plus 3 equals 0. And then, we just solve this equation by algebraic skills or by calculator. We get q equals 8. Question 8. A game is played with two dice. The score is the greater of the two numbers. If the two dice are the same, just take the number shown on the dice. Part A. We need to compute the table of the probability distribution of the score. So, we need to count the number of possible cases for each score. If the score is 1, the only case is 1-1 one, one for the first and the second dice. And for score 2, the possible cases are 1-2, one, 2-1 two, two, one, and 2-2 two, two for the two dice. And for score 3, 4, 5 and 6, we count the number of their possible cases as well. As we know, the number of possible cases are 6 times 6, 36. So the probabilities are just 1 over 36, 3 over 36, and so on. Part B. We need to find the probability of scoring at least 3 in a game. That means we need to score 3, 4, 5, or 6 in the game. So, we just need to add the probabilities of these four situations together. Next, we need to find the probability of scoring 6 given that they already scored at least 3. As there are 32 cases of scoring 3 and 11 cases of scoring 6. So, the final answer is just 11 over 32. Part C. We need to find the expected score of the game. Expected value is just the sum of all the values times their own probabilities together. So, we just use 1 times 1 over 36, plus 2 times 3 over 36, plus etc. Finally, we get 161 over 36. Question 9. We have a compass number W which is in terms of another complex number z. Part A. We need to find w when z equals 2i. So, what we need to do is just by substitution and change i squared to negative 1. Next part. Now, z is 1 plus i. We just do the similar thing and we can get i as the answer. Part B. We transform z on the Argon diagram to w by two transformations. We need to describe the two transformations with the order. w is zi plus 1. In compass plane, vertical acid is imaginary and horizontal acid is real. So, c times i means c is rotated anticlockwise by 90 degrees and then we add 1 to it. As 1 is a real number, so we just move it to the right by 1 unit. Part C. Now we have W and we need to find Z. 
So we just need to substitute 2 minus i for w and solve the equation. We make z to be the subject and get 1 minus i over i. Then we separate and multiply the term by i over i, we get negative i minus 1. Question 10. There are six points and we want to start and finish at point A. Here is a graph to represent the traveling time between any two points. Part A. Use Prim's algorithm to find the minimum time traveling by deleting A and starting at B. Also, we need to list the order of the edge selected. As A is deleted, we can skip this row and just focus on these 10 entries. As we start at B, we look at the row of B and there are 4 entries. Which number is the smallest? 46 of course. That is BC. After that, we look at the row of B and C. There are 6 entries. Which number is the smallest? 58 this time and that is the edge BD. As we cannot form a cycle, we need to delete the entry of CD. Then, we add the row of D to our choice. Now, we have 6 entries and 23 is the smallest, which is the edge DE. Finally, we choose EF which is equal to 47. We add them all together and we get 174. Next part, we need to find the lower bound for the traveling time, as we need to start from A and finish at A. So we just choose the lowest two entries from the row of A. That is AB 55 and AC 63. So we just add them together with the answer we got before. Part B, mention a way to improve the lower bound. We can just use the same method again, but deleting another vertex instead of A. Question 11. A factory produces some toys, and it claims that only 1% of the toys are faulty. A manager wants to test this claim. A box of 200 toys was delivered to him. After he checked it, there are 4 toys faulty. Part A. Identify the sampling of the manager, as he just takes the box which delivered to him. It is a convenient sampling. Then, the manager performs a one-tailed hypothesis test at 10% significance level, and the falls occurred independently. Part B. The new hypothesis is just the factory's claim. 1% of the toys are faulty and the alternative hypothesis is just opposite to it. More than 1% of the toys are 40. Part C. X is the number of toys found 40, which should follow a binomial distribution with n equals 200 and p equals 0.01. So, for the p value, it is just p, x greater than or equals 4. By calculator, 0.142 is found. Part D. State the conclusion. Since 14.2% is greater than 10%, we cannot reject H0. Question 12. A tank contains 400 liters water and it leaks such that there are 324 liters remain in the tank after 10 minutes. The volume of water remaining in the tank is B liters after T minutes, which is modeled by the following differential equation. Part A. We need to find the formula for B. So, we need to integrate the equation above. However, as the equation of dV over dt is in terms of B but not T, we need to separate the variables before we can integrate the equation. We need to put all the things containing V on a sign and the things containing T on the other sign. Now, left hand side only depends on V. 
and right hand side only contains a constant k. So we can integrate both sides with respect to b and t. Add the index by 1 and then divide it by the index. So left hand side we get b to the power half divided by half. Right hand side we get negative kt plus a constant c. Since it initially contained 400 liters. We can substitute 0 for t and 400 for v. Then we can solve c and get 40. Put it back to the equation. Don't forget that we still have one pair of data. So we just substitute 3 to 2, 4 for v and 10 for t. Simplifying it, and we can get k equals 2 over 5. Put it back to the upper equation, make root v to be the subject, and square both sides, then we can get the upper expression. Part b. We need to calculate the time taken for the tank empty. That means we need to find t when v equals 0. Simple equation. We just solve it and we find t equals 100. Question 13. There is a submarine at this coordinates. X direction is still east. Y direction is still north and Z direction is vertically upwards. All distances are measured in kilometers. The submarine travels in the direction of this better. Part A. The submarine travels in a straight line and we need to find the equation for the line it travels. So, the position vector of the submarine is equal to the original position vector plus t times its direction vector of traveling. Part B. The submarine reached the surface of the sea at point P. That means z equals 0. So, we can just put this back to the upper equation and find the other coordinates of p. When z equals 0, t is 0 0.3 and we can put it back to the other two coordinates equations and we can get x equals 0 0.2 and y equals 0 0.4. After that, we need to find op. That is the distance between P and the origin. So, it is just equal to the root of the sum of the coordinates square. After simplification, we get root 1 over 5 km. Question 14. The weight of some apples follow a normal distribution with mean 158 and SD 13. Now, we have 6 apples in a bag. Part A. Find the mean weight of a bag of apples. We write down the weight distribution of a single apple first. As the mean weight of a bag is the mean weight of 6 apples, we just need to multiply 158 by 6. Part B. We need to find the SD of the weight of a bag. For this question, we need to find the variance first, as the variance of a bag will just be the variance of an apple times 6. Variance of an apple is just the square of its SD. We multiply it by 6 and get 1014. Then, square root this, we get 13 root 6. Part C. We need to find the probability of a bag chosen, such that its weight is more than 1 kg. Now, the weight of a bag will follow a normal distribution with mean 948 and SD 13.6. root 6. We just need to input this into our calculator and we get 0 0.0512. Question 15. Here is a differential equation. The graph of the two solutions to the equation that passing through 0 1 and 0 3 are shown here. 
we know that the local minimum points line on the straight line L1. Part A. We need to find L1. By looking at the graph, we know that the two minima are this point and this point. So, L1 must be this straight line. Also, as at local minimum, the derivative must be zero. We can set zero is equal to the upper equation. And we get sine x plus y equals zero. Supporting from the graph, we can get y equals negative x. Part B. The local maxima of these two lines form a straight line L2. So, we can locate the two maxima on the graph and draw the line L2. This time, the derivative equals zero again. We need to think, apart from zero, is there any value of x plus y also makes sine to be zero? By the hint of the graph draw, we have pi as the answer. Question 16. An end is on a triangular prism. The vertices and edges are represented by the graph below. Part A. We need to write down the adjacency matrix M for the graph. So, it should be a 6 times 6 matrix. Each entry with 1 represents the edge deck connecting the two vertices. And 0 represents there is no edge connecting the two vertices. After filling all the entries, we get M. Part B. We need to find the number of ways that the end can start at A and walk along exactly 6 edges to return to A. Matrix M represents the way that an end can walk along the edge for one time. So, if it walks along 6 times, we just need to find M to the power of 6. Needless to say, we need to get that by the matrix computation of our calculator. Finally, we get the matrix like this. Anyway, we just need to consider it rocks from A and then back to A. So, we just need to look at the first entry of the matrix, which is 1, 4, 3. Question 17. We have a function, lateral x, which is translated by vector A, B. And it passes through C01 and E cube. 1 plus lateral log 2. We need to find A and B. So, after translation, we just replace x by x minus A and add the whole function by B. Then, substitute the two points above into the equation. By substituting O1, we get the first equation. By substituting E cubed 1 plus natural log 2, we get the second equation. We just need to solve simultaneous equations. Use the second equation minus the first one. Simplify it and by the rules we learned in logarithm chapter, we get A equals negative E cubed. Then we put it back to the first equation. We get B equals negative 2. We have gone through all the questions in this paper already. Thank you for watching. If you like it or want to know more, please like and subscribe my channel. Bye-bye.